friends, we all know that the key to great relationships is great communication. That is relationship advice 101. You do not need to be a counselor. You do not need to have fancy degrees. You probably don't even need to have a lot of different relationships in your life to know that ultimately a lot of it boils down to how do we communicate? Do we communicate well? Do we communicate in a healthy way? Do we communicate in a way that is empowering for and helpful to the relationship? Or, of course, there's the possibility that we might sometimes communicate, let's just say, less than effectively. (laughs) We may not always communicate in the way that we wish we did. And the hard thing about relationships is that we can't control the other person. You can't control your husband. You can't control your kids. You can't control your friends or your mom or your boss or your sister-in-law. All you can control is how you communicate with them. But I'm here to tell you, my friends, and this is from my experience as a family therapist sitting down with multiple people in the room who are struggling with a whole variety of things and helping them figure out how to communicate well together, I can tell you that one person, and yep, I'm talking about you, one person can make a huge difference in the relationship if they are communicating well. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How do we communicate well. I know it's a pretty broad topic, but you can apply it to every relationship that you have. Um, You might want to just think about it as a basic framework for healthy communication. And there are three keys, three priorities, three main points about communication that you can take away from today's conversation to impact all of your relationships. Even if the other person does not know anything about what we're going to talk about today, even if they don't change a thing about how they're communicating with you, you have a ton of influence and I'm just going to say power in how the relationship looks based on how you communicate with them. So that is a big promise (laughs) that you can improve all of your relationships as you work on your approach to communication. But it is a promise that I have seen play out again and again and again. So I am really excited to talk about this topic today, to dive into the basics of communication, and to leave you with some really practical and helpful tips and strategies, encouragement and advice to improve your relationships, to help you love your people well. That's why we're here. And we can't do it without good communication. So my friend, let's dive in. Welcome to the Love Your People Well podcast, where we help women grow godly relationships, grateful hearts, and grace-filled lives. I'm Jess, and I'm a marriage and family therapist, a Christian, a wife, a mom, and I believe that God creates us for relationships, relationship with Him and with each other. So if you're looking to love God well, to love yourself, your family, and those around you well, you're in the right place. Stick around, friend, and let's get started. So today is episode 71 of the podcast, my friend, and I am particularly pointing that out because you may not know this, but we have show notes on the website for every episode, kind of like a blog post style. You can read the highlights of what we talked about, but you can also find links to past episodes that are about the same or similar topics. And we do have quite a few earlier episodes about communication that I'm going to link to in the show notes. Um, There's also always links to resources or other articles, different things that will be helpful about this topic. So you're definitely going to want to check out loveyourpeoplewell.com forward slash 071 to get the show notes for today's episode. Because if communication is important to you, and obviously it is because you have relationships and you can't have good ones without communication, 
if that is important to you, you're definitely going to want to hop back and listen to some of those earlier episodes. And that is probably the easiest place to find those links without having to do your own searching. (laughs) Just go to the show notes. We have them every week with a lot of extra resources and support for whatever the topic is of the week. So for example, two links that you would find if you go to loveyourpeoplewell.com forward slash 071 right now, the show notes for today's episode, you will find a link to two resources that I want to highlight for you before we jump into our framework and these three keys for great communication. One is that you might want to check out a free resource that we have called the 10 point checklist for conflict resolution. If you are struggling with communication, uh, that's pretty often linked, Not certainly not always, but it's often linked with a struggle in how you handle conflict in those relationships. And so this free resource is a simple checklist. I think it's a two-page PDF um, that's really helpful to just print out and have it on hand so that when you find communication's not going so well, someone's getting upset, you starting, you're starting to walk down that path that you don't want to go down to just say, hey, pause, let's pull this out. Let's just walk through the steps. That's exactly how I've designed it to work because when our emotions take over, we don't tend to communicate very effectively. So that free resource is on the website. You will also find a link for our 40-day devotional on communication in marriage because that is one of the relationships where we struggle the most to communicate well. There's a number of reasons for that. Um, but that's the person who is supposed to be our person. You know what I'm saying? Like that, this is the guy you have to communicate with on a regular basis. And if it doesn't go well, it impacts everything in life because this is the most intimate, the most important, the most long lasting relationship that you will have. And so if communication is a struggle in your marriage, you're definitely going to want to check out the 40 day devotional on communication in marriage. And you can find links to both of those um, on the website in the show notes for today, which is loveyourpeoplewell.com forward slash 071. So before we dive in, um, I will just share my quick disclaimer that I share every time. I am a therapist. I even mentioned that in the intro. We talk about communication all the time in the therapy room. That probably doesn't surprise you. But of course, this podcast and the resources from Love Your People Well are not personal or professional advice to you. This is not therapy. And there is always a link in the show description, um, this episode description, if you are curious for more thoughts about how to get connected with a great counselor. So we have that in mind. We have some free resources for you. Let's talk about communication, my friend. And talking is probably what you think about. When I say communication, you think, well, yeah, what am I saying to people? What are they saying to me? But the reality is the talking, the speaking is only one part of good communication. Now we can stop there. We can only think about what am I saying? Um, But we're really not going to communicate very effectively if that is where we stop. There are three key elements to communication that have to happen. And we're going to talk about how do you do them? How do you do them well? But communication includes number one, speaking. Yes. What am I saying? The words that are coming out of my mouth, that is a big part of communication. But it also includes number two, listening. If I am talking into an empty room, I'm not really, I'm not communicating. I'm speaking and it might help me to process through what's going on. Um, And I'm not talking about prayer where you are intentionally communicating with God. I'm talking about, you know, you're washing the dishes and you're talking to yourself, which trust me is not as weird as you might think it is because, well, anyway, we're not going to walk down that path. It's not that strange. It's not that unusual. I talk to myself all the time. I don't expect anyone to answer. That is probably the key that we always need to watch out for. But if I'm just talking to myself, reminding myself, oh yeah, oh shoot, I forgot to buy milk at the store. Oh yeah, don't forget to call that person. I'm speaking, but I'm not communicating because there's no one to be listening on the other side. You cannot have communication without, number one, words being spoken. Number two, someone listening. And then there is a third component to communication, which is response. 
The only way that we truly can say we are communicating with someone is there is speaking, there is listening, and there is responding. All three elements have to happen for communication to be occurring. And at any of those three elements, things can go haywire. Things can go off track. Things can move in a direction that is not healthy, not helpful, not encouraging, not biblical. And that is really what we're going to talk about today. Because yes, I could end it now and say, don't forget, you got to talk, you got to listen, you got to respond. And you would probably say, well, yeah, that's that's not that crazy. <laughs> But the key is, how do I do it? How do I do it when I'm upset? How do I do it when they are not listening to me? How do I do it when things are are just feeling like I'm talking to an empty room, even though there's another person there? That is really where it comes down to, do we have good communication? And I made the claim at the beginning of this episode that even though you have no control over the other people in your life, if you work on strengthening your communication with them, even if they make zero changes, you will see an improvement in those relationships and in those interactions. And yeah, I'm saying they are not making any changes, but the reality of life is that if any one of these three elements of communication changes, what are we saying? How are we listening? How are we responding? If you make a change in one of those areas, the other person, by default, has to change because now they have to respond to something that's different. I'm not saying they will necessarily respond well all the time, but the piece you can control is how are you speaking? How are you listening? And how are you responding? So let's walk through each of these in a little bit more detail. In all three of these elements of communication, there are three pieces of communication. It's a lot of threes, but you know, hey, that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. There are three ways that we communicate, whether we are speaking, whether we are listening, or whether we are responding. So I'm going to highlight those three elements right now. And then as we dive into the speaking, the listening, the responding, you will see how they play out in different ways in each of those roles that we have within communication. So whether we're speaking, responding, or listening, It all comes down to the actual words that are said. So, right, like content. Am I saying, hey, sweetie, or am I saying, hey, stupid? That's going to have an impact, just the words themselves, but also the tone of voice and our body language. Those have a huge impact in, in our speaking part of communication, in how we listen to other people, and in how we respond. And again, that's not rocket science. You have undoubtedly experienced that in your own relationships and your interactions that you have heard your kids say, yes, mom, I agree. And they might say it with a smile. Yeah, mom, I totally agree. Or they might say it with sarcasm. Yeah, mom, I totally agree. You know the difference. The words are the same, but the tone is different. Probably the body language is different. We can't see each other right now on the podcast, but I'm going to trust that you can picture the happy, I actually do agree with you version and the sarcastic version. We've all been there. We all know what that looks like. But all three of these don't just play out in how we speak and what we're saying. It plays out in how we listen and how we respond. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's pause and zero in on the speaking side of relationships. And this, again, it's probably the area we think about um, first and probably most often if we are thinking about our communication at all and we're trying to be intentional about it. And the scriptures tell us a lot about how we use our words. I actually opened up the Bible and was doing a little bit of a word study um, because I wanted to highlight a few scriptures for you today in this episode. So I was looking up, you know, like, well, what does the Bible say about the tongue and about words? And there was just too much. (laughs) Like I I could list off, you know, a thousand Bible verses for you, but that's not really the point of this podcast. It's all over the pages of scripture. God has a lot to say about what we have to say and how we say it. I think we particularly see it in the New Testament, in a lot of the letters that the apostles were writing to the early churches to try to encourage them and help them walk biblically and live out their new Christian calling. 
And a lot of that came down to how are they talking to each other and about each other. So I'm not going to just review everything in there. Um, just open your Bible and do a quick look and you will find a ton of good stuff about our words and the speaking part of communication. I will highlight one particular um, verse. If you read James chapter 3, there is a lot in there about the tongue. In one particular way, it says, this is verse 2, we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. And I just love that short little verse because <laughs> we all know none of us are perfect. We all have moments where we are at fault in what we say, where we say the wrong thing. We wish we had bit our tongue, but we didn't. Sometimes we say the wrong thing, but we don't even know it's the wrong thing until we see how the other person responds. And we say, oh, shoot, I did not realize I was going to be hitting a nerve with what I just said. We all struggle at different times with the speaking part of communication. So what can we do about that part of communication, especially when we think about our words, our tone of voice and our body language? How do those play out? in what we say, in the speaking part of communication. So one tip that I would have for you here is to, <laughs> I'm just going to say to speak less, right? I mean, And that's in scripture too, right? That we should listen more than we're speaking. If we rush into a response to someone, um, and maybe that's us initiating a conversation because we're upset about something or we notice something or we're excited about something and we just want to talk about it, if we rush into conversation, we are a lot more likely to say things that might not be fully accurate or well thought out or um, are really helpful for the conversation. That doesn't mean they're bad necessarily, but it might not actually be helpful. We see that in <laughs> this is a verse that ooh, challenged me. Oh my goodness. Earlier in my Christian walk, it still pops up from time to time because, you know, you memorize something and then the Lord will bring it back when he needs to. But Ephesians chapter four, verse 29 tells us, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Pause. Okay, we can agree with that. Don't speak unwholesomely. Don't say cruel things, mean things that hurt other people. And But then it continues with the second half of the verse. But... Only say what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And I really can't think of a better call for how we think about our speaking in communication. Yes, there are things we want to avoid. We don't want to be cursing at people, name calling people, um, critic. I mean, we might need to critique people or give some feedback to people, but that is different than criticizing people, um, putting people down. We know that we don't want to do that. But are we as intentional about only speaking things that are actually going to be helpful? Are we in tune enough with our people that we know what their needs are so that when we speak, we are building them up according to their needs? If you have more than one kid, you know what this is like. You know that they have different personalities different struggles. And so the way that you give feedback to one might be different than the way you give feedback to another. The way that you need to encourage your daughter might be different than how you encourage your son. Not because you care about them any differently, but because they're different people and they need different things from you in what you are speaking to build them up. So I would really encourage you to slow down <laughs> before speaking and try to be intentional about what you say. And this is usually most difficult when we are experiencing high emotions. If our emotions are getting high, we're getting upset, we're getting frustrated, we're getting angry, we're a lot more likely to say things that we later regret having said. And we are a lot more likely to say things with a tone of voice and a body language that later we regret, that we wish we hadn't let come out. There are so many ways that we can belittle the people that we love and put them down simply by what our eyes are doing, what our 
arms are doing during a conversation. Are we rolling our eyes or making eye contact? Are we crossing our arms or sitting comfortably in a chair? That has a big impact. It's not maybe changing what you say, but it's changing how the other person is going to experience it. So being aware of your emotions And being willing to slow down to say, I need to take a break or simply to bite your tongue because you know you are not in a place to really fully engage in the conversation because of the emotions that you are dealing with. We need to figure out ways to deal with those emotions so that our speaking in our communication is healthy and holy. And I would say helpful. (laughs) We need to be able to figure out in the moment And I'm not saying this is easy. We have other episodes where we've talked about this. But if we can't do that, then we're not going to speak ultimately in a very effective way to have great, healthy communication. And one thing, this is kind of a silly counselor thing, but I'm going to put it out there because you never know what people might really want to try. One of the best things that I have found as a counselor is observing back to the person I'm talking with what I see from their body language. Because we so often, we're thinking about what am I saying, we're caught up in our feelings, and we're not aware that we are tapping our foot while we're saying it, or that our arms are crossed, and we're leaning back, and we're kind of physically shutting ourselves off from the conversation. So I am not suggesting that you start commenting back to your child or your husband or your friend, oh, hey, when you said that, oh, I noticed that you were tapping your foot, that makes me think you're anxious, let's talk about that. I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting that if you think you are struggling with this, that you either ask for feedback from your husband or from a friend, or if it's a high conversation, a hot button conversation, that you practice it in front of the mirror. Or, you know, you have a phone, practice it and record yourself and watch it back. If it is a a really important conversation, if you think your emotions are going to get high, it's worth trying to notice what your body language looks like before you have the conversation because you'll be surprised at what you notice. So that's just a a little counselor tip kind of above and beyond, but might, it might be particularly helpful for those big conversations that you are a little bit concerned about. But let's move on and talk about part two of healthy communication. The second key is that we have to listen well. And this is probably the part where people get the most frustrated because Uh, Well, for a lot of reasons, we ultimately we don't want to slow down and listen to other people if we are passionate about something, if our emotions are high, and we get the most frustrated when we feel like, I'm not saying it's always accurate, but if we feel like the other person is not listening to us or not listening well, that is often how conversations escalate into conflict. But again, you're not, we're not talking about how can you get your husband to listen to you better or get your, your child to listen to you better. We're talking about how can you listen to them better, more effectively. And again, we have to think about the words, the tone of voice, and the body language. Now, hopefully in a conversation when you are the listener, it might be for a short period, might be for a long period. Hopefully your words are very minimal and they might include things like, "Uh uh-huh, okay, tell me more, wait, what? Like you might have a few little questions or clarifications, but generally your words are not happening at this point because you are listening. That does not mean that your body language is not saying a lot. This is often where we see the eye rolling or the foot tapping or the crossed arms because we are reacting to what we hear, we're, we're moving into the response phase while we're listening. And that's, that's normal, but if we're not aware of it, we actually are communicating a lot, and it might not be what we want to be communicating. So again, being mindful of what is my body doing, what's my face doing while I'm listening to this other person is going to go a long way in building healthy and great communication. And this probably is a place where if you can try to think like a counselor. I mean, as a counselor, you're hearing people share very difficult things, very emotional things, sometimes very upsetting things. You know, they're talking about a big fight that they had or something like that. And there's a lot of training in grad school and a lot of practice around how to 
use your body language and respond to people even during the listening phase of, of communication. But that might help. We have a, an earlier episode about active listening, you know, and a big part of that is how are we mm, listening? So again, I'll link to that in the show notes, loveyourpeoplewell.com forward slash 071. Um, but there is a lot that's happening while we're listening and we don't often think about that. So we have to be mindful of our words while we're listening. Are we interrupting? Are we adding a lot of our own thoughts? Because then we're, we're not listening, we're speaking. And we need to be careful of our body language. And there are two particular proverbs that I want to highlight here that also get in the way or, or help us maybe understand what's going on when we are listening. So in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13, we see this this little nugget of wisdom, to answer before listening, that is folly and shame. And that happens so often in communication that instead of listening, we're actually planning what we're going to say. And sometimes we say it before, (laughs) before the other person has even said anything. Can you imagine anything more frustrating? But either way, if we are focused ultimately on what am I either, what did I just say, or what am I about to say, or what do I need to say? We're not listening. We're focused on ourselves. And when we are listening, the focus should be on the other person. What are they saying? Trying to understand it. And not just, again, not just the words, but what does their tone of voice tell you about the emotions that are there? What does their body language tell you about their emotions, their values, their, you know, how important this is to them. The goal when we are in the listening stage of communication is that we are trying to understand the other person. And of course, sometimes that's easy. If you're having a conversation at church about the bake sale that's coming up that you're going to help with, there's probably not a lot of difficulty in balancing the speaking and the listening because your emotions aren't very high and maybe you're just trying to get some clarification and some action steps. What do I need to do? When do I need to show up? That's fine. But in our family, especially in in close relationships, a lot of communication will include emotions and you will have your own thoughts, your own perspective, your own opinions about things. Yet we need to remember to answer before listening. That is folly and shame. Those are powerful words, my friend. We do not want folly. We do not want to be shameful in how we listen to the people that we love. So yes, don't be saying a lot while you're listening. Yes, be careful of your body language, but also be in your own head in the right mental space that you are trying to understand the other person. And the last piece that I want to highlight about listening comes from Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11 which says, fools give full vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. And yes, that starts to speak into the responding part of communication, but that calmness that that the Proverbs tell us, wise people are bringing calm in what is clearly a difficult conversation. If someone's winding up in a feeling of rage that they have to vent about it, in that same situation, someone else staying calm... (laughs) That's obviously intentional and difficult. And we can do that when we are listening by, again, where are we focusing our mindset and how do we let that play out in the the few words that we do say, the tone of voice we say them in, and especially our body language. If you are listening to someone who is sharing a perspective that's totally different than yours, and you're, you might be thinking to yourself, no, no, you're wrong. Mm, that, that, that's not true. That's not right. That's not accurate. L- the stage of communication where you are listening, number one, it's not the time to say that. But number two, it's not the time to be thinking about that. If you really want to respect the other person and have a good conversation, you need to be trying to understand them. You're not necessarily trying to be convinced by them. You're certainly not trying to be manipulated by them. But if you can focus on simply that goal of what are they saying? Why are they saying that? And keeping your emotions in check as you're listening, that conversation is going to go so differently because you're not going to be rolling your eyes. You're not going to be tapping your foot. You're not going to be crossing your arms. 
those might not be giving full vent to your rage either, but they are also not going to bring calm in the end. So when we're listening, that is a really good time to try to be mindful about, I'm making eye contact with you. I'm nodding my head at the appropriate times in based on what you're saying. I'm asking maybe a little clarification question or saying, you know, making those silly little nonverbals like, "Mm mm-hmm, uh-huh. Those actually are really important to show people I'm listening so they can feel heard and encouraged and continue on in a healthier form of communication. It's not just about are you actually listening and hearing them, but also are you sending them the message that you are listening and hearing them? But let's close out our conversation today by talking about the responding part of communication because we we often overlook this and it is so hugely important about if we can walk away from a conversation saying that felt good or that did not. Do we have good communication here or poor communication here? If there's no response, it was not good communication. And of course, how you respond to the other person is going to depend in large part about, you know, do you agree with them? Was there an action step that was discussed? Are you, you know, that either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. But even if it's just a, a very basic conversation at home, you're asking your kid about their day at school, or you're talking to your husband about what happened at work, or sharing, you know, thought from your devotional time with the Lord, something that might not feel like there's actually a response to be made there is always a response to be made. Even if that response is as simple as someone giving you a hug or smiling at you or just responding, you they say something about, oh gosh, look at the weather. I didn't think it was going to rain today. You can ignore that. That's a response. Or you can say, oh yeah, it is raining. And you can actually respond with a comment or a look or something really small But again, it's telling them, I hear you, I'm interacting with you, I care about what you're saying. Now, is that little communication going to change your marriage or change your life? No, it's not. But if it never happens, if your response is ignoring them because it was a nothing little comment that doesn't really need a response, it's true, it doesn't need a response. But the ignoring, if that becomes the habit and the routine Well, you do not have healthy and good communication at that point. And we see this biblically in two particular um, passages that are speaking specifically to how do we respond when we listen to God's word. But we can certainly apply this to how we respond in our day-to-day interactions, our family interactions. In um, the two verses I'm looking at are James chapter 1 verses 22 to 25, and then Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. And they both talk about, do not listen to the word, listen to what God says, and then fail to do what God said. They both are looking at, when we hear what God says, we have two options. We can either act on it, build our life on it, follow him, and then good things happen, or we can walk away and ignore it and move on in whatever direction we want to. And then, of course, foolishness and, and pain and suffering will happen. So in James chapter 1, we see it here, the 22 to 25. You know, do not merely listen to the word and deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone listening to the word but not doing what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. So basically a fool. (laughs) If you hear something and you don't act on it, and of course, if you've heard it from God, there's only one correct way to act, (laughs) to do what it says. But whatever it is, whoever it is that we're listening to, if we walk away and completely forget about it, don't do anything about it, don't have any response, that's foolish. That is not loving our people well. That is not building up that relationship. That is not good communication. And we see the same thing in Matthew 7. This is Jesus talking about how everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, but it didn't fall because it had its foundation on the rock. 
But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So if we take this biblical principle about responding to God's word and apply it in our own family context, in our friendships, in our workplace or our church or our neighborhood even, anytime you have a conversation with someone, if there is no response, or especially if there really is a correct response, oh yes, I told you I would take out the trash. Oh yes, I told you I would pick you up from soccer practice. If we don't do it, we are hurting that relationship. Now, of course, that might happen accidentally. That's a different situation. But I can, I could give you plenty of examples of people saying something, saying they're going to do something or they believe something or they agree with something simply to end the conversation, simply to leave things. I'm tired. I don't want to talk about this anymore. And then, of course, that's not actually building and improving and strengthening the relationship because it wasn't true and it wasn't honest. And the response is not ultimately helpful. But the one other piece I would encourage you to think about when it comes to your responding part of communication. So number one, we have to think about how am I responding? The lack of response, the ignoring, that is still a response and probably not a very good one. Now, that might be a little different if someone is just venting and you're choosing, I'm going to bite my tongue and just try to change the conversation. (laughs) That's a different type of ignoring. But we have to be aware that we are always responding, even by not verbally responding. And then we also have to be very careful about actually following through with what we said we were going to do or whatever the right and correct response or action would be. And then the third piece here, I think we can see a lot of wisdom from, again, from the Bible, Luke chapter 6, verses 41 to 42, which is pretty famous. Um, It's asking the question, why do you look at the speck of dust in your brother's eye and you're paying no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, oh, let me take the speck out of your eye when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your eye and then you will see more clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. And of course, This somewhat has to do with the listening that we talked about, not focusing on what am I going to say, how am I going to respond, but actually focusing on the other person, trying to help them, trying to understand them. But when we think about our response, we need to be very careful to be growing in humility, to avoid responding in a communication, whether it's a small one or a big hot button issue, whatever the communication is. We need to respond in ways that challenge us as well as the other person to be growing and, and, and growing closer in the Lord and growing closer in our relationship and whatever practical play out there is there, your kids at school, your husband at work, whatever it might be, we need to be trying to actually help and improve their life and our own life. Because a lot of times in communication, we... We notice the things for the other person that are also true in ourselves because it's easier to notice it in them. And we're probably more sensitive to it because there is a little piece of us that's already aware of it being an issue in our own life. So you see this play out all the time when someone's having an argument and, um, you know, and they're saying, oh, you never listen to me. Okay, well, the truth is, if you step back, are you listening to them? We need to ask ourselves that question or they'll be saying, um, you know, making an accusation, like, oh, you always yell when we have a conversation. Well, you're probably saying that because you feel a little bit guilty about how often you yell in a conversation. And it doesn't just play out in conflict, but that's probably when it's most obvious. So when you are responding and trying to strengthen that part of your communication, take time to pray about it and to try to to be humble in that response so that you can respond in whatever way is actually going to be helpful. It's going to grow them. It's going to challenge them. It's going to strengthen them because you're not ignoring an issue in your own life. So again, when we think about those three pieces, our words, our tone of voice, and our body language, 
How does that play out in our response? Well, it certainly plays out in our words. (laughs) And with that, our tone of voice, but also the body language. Do we agree to something while we're giving that big, heavy sigh and walking out the door? Do we finish the conversation and then slam the door behind us? That is a part of our response. It might not be intentional. We might not be trying to purposefully say anything by it or send a message by it, but we're sending a message. You know that you are. You're just not maybe thinking about it in the moment. It's just a reaction. So let's just summarize these basic principles of communication, these three keys ultimately to healthy communication. We need to be careful with our speaking, our listening, and our responding. When we think about speaking, we need to slow down and try to be intentional with what we say. We need to watch our emotions and work on stopping if we need to, biting our tongue, (laughs) not letting the emotions lead what we say. And it really might be helpful to practice a big conversation in front of the mirror to kind of plan out what you want to say, especially so you can be careful about your tone of voice and your body language. And when we think about listening, we need to make sure we're not talking too much. We're not shifting the focus back to us. We need to be careful of our body language. And we really need to focus on understanding what the other person is saying. One of the key things that I have people do in the counseling room is I'll ask them, you know, can you summarize back what they said? I know you can share your point of view, your perspective. We're we're, going to get to that. We're not ignoring that. But if you cannot summarize back what they just said, you weren't listening or you fell short in some way. So really try to understand what they are saying, why they're saying it, their emotions, and stay calm so that you can send that nonverbal message, I am listening. You can show them with your body language, especially that you are listening. And then what about the responding? We need to remember we are always responding, ignoring someone. That's a response. Rolling your eyes. That's a response. We also need to follow through when we say we're going to do something. Or if there is a correct response, they might not ask us to do something, but we know God would want me to do this or the kind of natural appropriate response would be this. We need to do it. We need to actually take action and we need to be humble and seek to genuinely help them in whatever way it is that we are responding. So my friends, I hope that this is helpful. (laughs) I hope that you can can really zero in on not the whole thing, but just whatever element of what we talked about today is really hitting home for you, that you found yourself thinking, oh, ooh, yeah, ooh, I could work on that. Stop there. That is the place to take it to the Lord, to seek the Holy Spirit's strengthening and, and rebuking and teaching and encouragement so that he can be growing you. The Lord can be growing you in your communication with your husband, with your kids, with your in-laws, with your friends, with everyone you interact with, building these three elements of communication will strengthen all of those relationships. And I'll just close you with a prayer that I try to pray frequently when I'm starting to record a podcast episode or I'm going into a conversation, you know, especially a conversation I think might be difficult. I like to pray Psalm 141 verses three to four, which says, Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. And I know that that highlights most specifically the speaking part of things. Um, But at least for me, you know, hey, I'm recording a podcast. It's all about the speaking. You can't see my hands moving and my facial expressions right now. But so often that is where we wind up getting in trouble. We say something that we really wish we hadn't said. And then the listening, the responding, everything kind of falls apart because of the words or the tone or the body language of what we actually said. So that might be a great place to start is just praying, set a guard over my mouth, Lord, keep watch over the door of my lips. My friend, that is all I have for today. Don't forget to grab our free 10 point checklist for conflict resolution Um, Or check out our 40-day devotional on communication in marriage. If you specifically want to build up your marriage, that is a great place to focus on communication. 
but we will be back on Friday with our Friday faith follow-up episode. So I hope to see you there. Well, I'll talk to you there, I guess. <laughs> Until then, um, you know, I'm on Instagram at love your people. Well, I'm in the Facebook group all week long. So there are plenty of ways to connect. I hope that this was helpful. And I hope that you'll share this episode with a friend because trust me, they want great relationships too. <laughs> and this can be a great way to encourage and help your friends. All right. Hugs and blessings to you, my friend. I'll talk to you soon. Hey friend, before you go, If this episode was helpful or encouraging for you, head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a written review. It not only encourages me, it helps other women connect with this community. And you know what else? You have a chance right now to love your friends well. Copy the link to this episode and send it in a text to someone who you know needs to hear today's conversation. Or just take a screenshot, post it in your Instagram stories, and tag me at loveyourpeoplewell.com.